application, at that point, we will just have to inform you that uh, you know the funds have run out, and 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 that uh, they're they're welcome to apply next year. Keeping a waiting list is uh, it's a difficult option because HUD will typically say that you need to review their income on an annual basis. So if the cycle starts, if we took applications this year, 2020, and we take applications for 2021, we have to use the latest uh, uh, income information that they have. And, and, and so uh, keeping a waiting list is really not practical uh, unless you have more than one cycle in a year, which, which you nev we never do. Other questions? I had a question, um, Mr. Pappas. Regarding, did I hear you correctly that the average amount that was given for the utility assistance was 700 and something dollars? That, that's what we were calculating. Uh, on a, tip, a typical household, would be like, a, we said $115, $125, I believe, and um, my math is all off. The, the way that we did the calculation is three months of utility bills. 125, 125, 5. Let's just go with 125. So that's um, 375. And the program will provide assistance for six months. So we double that 375 to 750. Okay. And so a household has 750 available to use. If they use more water than what they were averaging previously, then there'll be less, whatever. 750 will be whatever that amount is until it runs out. I was just wondering how the calculation was yes, done. Thank you. So the households of of the, um, the households that applied, but if you ran out of funding, were they did they experience termination of their services? Because you had more applicants than you had money available. So those applicants that did not receive funding, did we turn turn off their water? I I don't that that's uh I I believe that. Utility will probably do that, that if they haven't paid their bill or that there comes a point where there will be a shutoff. Um, so who makes the determination to provide funding for six months? If, if we could service more people and provide it for three months, who makes that determination? Who set the criteria? Yeah, that, that criteria was set essentially by um, what, what HUD allowed and also um, administratively. Okay. Is the money your mo for utilities for for water, or it can be used for any utility? It's for the utility bill. It's for water, sewer, water and sewer. Okay. Yes. Sir. Okay. Any other questions? If I may. Yes. Mr. Papa, is that in conjunction with other programs? I mean, can you apply and receive the 750 grant, and still apply for other services like from Elder Source or? You can, you uh, certainly a can. Person, I should um, say. There is a, the need to avoid the duplication of benefits, which is the one thing. Uh, for our program, it's going to be easy because we don't write a check to any beneficiary. It's a credit to their account. I got you. So if, so, if somehow they, were, they received help from elsewhere and paid their utility bill, then we know not to credit their account for that amount. Thank you. But if they received funding from someplace else and the check was cut directly to yeah. them, there's no way to really mm -hmm. check that. Correct? Right, right. Our, our application did uh, state that, uh, you know, there's a need to disclose the du duplication of benefits and there, there may be punitive uh, action if they're discovered to have had duplication of benefits. Of course, from from our side, it's not going to be us. But you know, money they might have received from another program. It, I, how they would get? Uh, well, it's a little more. I guess it would be a little more difficult. But thank you. Any additional questions or comments? I do have one additional question about the housing rehab program. Do you guys receive any referrals from code, depart code enforcement as a result of code enforcement violations for homes that may be in need of repair? 
We've, we've not, typically. No, no, ma'am. Thank you. Seeing no other questions, any further discussion? Rath, do you have anyone on the line? No, ma'am. Okay, seeing none. Do we have a motion? To I'll motion make a motion to approve. to approve. We have a second? Second. Thank you. Irene, roll call vote, please. James Albano. Yes. E. Santa Maria. Yes. Dorothy Sperber. Yes. Lynn Smith. Yes. Jake Scully. Yes. Sybil Dodson Lucas. Yes. Sandra Shank. Yes. Charles Lemon. Yes. Motion carries eight to zero. Thank you. Are there any items not on the agenda that the board or staff would like to discuss? I have, I have one thing, ma'am, uh, madam chair. And this has to do with, uh, I, uh, during the summer when we went over the a annual action plan, I believe you, uh, the board brought to my attention of maybe looking into first time home buyer program. And I think at that time I, I made a statement that uh, I, I will do some research and look at uh, what, what's being done or how we've done one in the past. Um, when the city re was received the neighborhood stabilization program funds, those funds were used for down payment and closing assistance. So that sort of provided uh, an outline of how we might potentially, I just <laughs> how we might potentially uh, structure a program. And of course, the, the county has offers a first time home buyers program to, to ship. And so, if, if I may just call it up again. And so I, I would just like to go briefly, quickly and briefly go over um, this outline that I'm, um, we're developing and I will we will distribute this to all the board members um, after this meeting so that uh, you can take a look at it. Because, and you know, this is of course, is there a way we can uh, check the, change the view on this? Yeah. I apologize. It, it, this, this outline also provides some of the things that probably needs to be considered if we're going to offer a first time home buyers program. Um, we, we can look at things into more detail and. Sorry. Okay. That's fine. Sure. So, uh, first thing, of course, uh, just trying to define who, who will be eligible as a first time home buyer. And uh, following the, the first time home buyer definition of HUD, again, so that's probably the definition we would want to use if we were to establish this program uh, to be consistent with best practices and HUD's guidelines. Essentially, it's essentially an individual or a couple who's had no ownership in a principal residence within a three year period. And there are some other caveats in there that probably uh, would require more uh, um, review. Includes things like a single parent who has only owned with a former spouse while married. So I guess if uh, there's a change in, 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 in marriage status, that would make them eligible to be considered as a first time home buyer. And the, the maximum award, and this is what uh, the SHIP program offers. Mm -hmm. and, and that, that's why I, I, I wrote it down here. I, not, I apologize, it's not coming in in the way I want it to, but like for a very low income household, a maximum award could be up to $35,000, low 25, moderate 10,000. And for financial, there's uh, also a portion here that if they were to receive an award, it, there, there's a clawback clause, typical with any first time home buyers program, that uh, if you receive any form of assistance, there needs to be some guarantee that that, that property will not just be turned over for profit within a, you know, within a short period. And so those things include things like if you receive assistance, of $25,000 or less, then that would require a 10-year non-amortizing mortgage, 
it's 25,000 or more, then it's a 15 year. And, and that's the way that the, when the city had the NSP program, that was the clawback uh, policy for, for the program. And there are some things, in the, and then of course the program also would have to look at the, their, the household's ability to pay back the loan or, or the mortgage and not be too burdened by, by a mortgage. And, and, and uh, so there are some things there that, that are uh, those debt to income ratios that uh, will help in, in assisting to make sure that we're just not putting a household in a position where to fail or to be foreclosed on. And uh, I, I'm not the most uh, savvy with, uh, with some of these terms, but uh, this is why if we go through this program, it'll probably require conversation with someone who's, maybe someone from the county who's uh, run a first-time home buyers program, or even with uh, retaining, the, retaining the services of a consultant to help us through the processing of, of of applicants and and households from from application to maybe closing of of a mortgage or assistance. And the only other thing I really want to call out here is that, uh, and this is based on um, actually this is from SHIP also and also under the NSP program. Prefabricated manufactured housing or trailers are not allowable to be acquired under this, under this program. Um, there are very limited. Those are very limited within the city of Palm Coast, if, if they exist at all. So that's just something that I saw. And then again, loan requirements, um, very basic, FHA, VA, 30 or 15 year, fixed rate mortgage, uh, things like subprime mortgages, adjust adjustable rate mortgages will not be allowed. Again, trying to ensure that House remains affordable and for, for any qualified buyer under this program. And if we did have a home, first time home buyers program, again, it would need to, participants would still need to meet the income requirements of, our, of the CDBG, which is that your income, household income, cannot exceed 80% of the low moderate income for for Palm Coast. Um, that, that is just uh, the way that, that's just a requirement of the CDBG program. That's a part of the national objective that must be met, that uh, households to be assisted must meet the 8% or below area median income. Bob, uh, the uh, uh, AMI for this area is for uh, a single is uh, approaching sixty thousand dollars now, for a family of four, it's fifty six thousand. Fifty six. So that's the eighty percent, or is that the? That that's the uh, area median income. So eighty percent of that would be, what gotcha. uh, for a family of four. I'm sorry, I, I just don't remember what that would be for an individual. But be less, right? Yes, sir. And so the last thing would be uh, just looking at. I, I think the maximum award would be no more than 20% of the purchase price. And so tw 20, maximum award of 20% of the purchase price or that maximum of if in the beginning that we saw of $35,000 for a ex for a low, extremely low, very low uh, household or 25,000 for a low income household and moderate income household of $10,000. So those are the things. I. I Welcome comments on this. I'll send it out, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, you're, you're probably some of you are probably way more experienced with with this, <clears throat> having worked through with ship the, with the ship program with the county, and that's a conversation that I will also have with uh, whoever's. I'm not sure if they've hired a new person to administer <coughs> ship, but that would be something uh, that. I would certainly reach out and do. And of course, also tap into uh, some of the, <clears throat> some, some other municipalities who might run a first time home buyers program using CDBG. Thank you, Mr. Papa, for following through with our request. Yeah. 
and you've outlined a great program. It's like you said, it seems to be identical to what SHIP is doing. So I think that if we should adopt this, what would be the next step for this to become? Well, let's, well, yes. So I think it would be, you know, we will incorporate this as part of our local housing assistance plan. So that in, the, in addition to the rules that we have now for our, for our uh, housing rehab program, we would add this on so that we have a section for first time home buyers program. And uh, maybe we'll, we'll do that before we get into the approval of next year's annual action plan. And then the decision at that time will have to be made by this board as to how you want, might want to divvy up the funds that are gonna be available. Um, I, I will, part of uh, my additional research would be what, what has been a reasonable amount, I think, that people think they, that most programs would use in an, in an average year for, for first time home buyers assistance. If that's something that you'd like to pursue with the next next uh, allocation. I, I'll, I'll come back to you with a report at that time about, I mentioned that we might not be able to serve everybody who's applied through our owner-occupied housing rehab program this year. Does that mean maybe we would need to dedicate more or maybe keep it the same? I, I guess I'm trying to say that uh, I'll try to provide you with a, with, with a picture of what the demands are with owner with with the housing rehab, and what the potential demand would be for first time home buyers program, and see uh, what what the board might want to do with with how that's uh, divided or split. Any comments from anyone else? Papa, when you do that, could you uh, help uh, the numbers challenged of us up here and and uh, uh, explain? if there are any uh, flexibility with the unspent um, category amounts that were allocated in previous years uh, as looking at the HUD report and you know the the unexpended was over 700,000 before the award so I, I don't know what can be done with that and this the planning meeting uh, uh, is probably a better place to discuss it but if you could be prepared to yes sir teach us about that that'd be great I, I can tell you that we probably have very little left that uh, with this housing rehab go around, we will probably um, only be left mainly with uh, this year's allocation, the 485,000 I believe that we okay. received for fiscal year 2020. And, pre and unspent public services. Public well. service, yes sir. Yeah. I, I will say this also that um, there, there's the opportunity to use some of the unspent public service to for uh, some of the COVID related challenges we're facing now. But uh, any amount that I, I, we, that needs to be moved will probably, will have to come through this board. Thanks. I think it's really the timing of us putting this first time home buyer program is really important. I think one of the things that we see with COVID-19 and now with the eviction moratoriums expiring at the end, in the end of this month, this is a prime example of why it's important to have people in home ownership because people who are in home <coughs> ownership will have a little bit more time and flexibility to save their homes versus people who are renting. And we have a lot of renters here. And not only that, the, you know, the fair market value of a lot of the rental properties will probably exceed what the mortgages will be for the people that this program is structured for. Mm -hmm. So it is critical, it is very critical that this becomes a reality and that we are able to um, come up with the funding allocation for a program like this for next year. It's going to strengthen, strengthen our community. Housing stability is critical to the health and vitality of a community. And we have a lot of rental properties and a lot of people that may be facing not only here but in this country evictions and you know so thank you again for following through with it and I'm looking forward to in 2021 for this board to be able to make a decision with along with you about the funding allocation and making it a reality thank you any other 
comments? Seeing none, do we have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody want to stay here until midnight? <laughs> okay. Everyone have a good evening. Most minute. Mo I want a meeting adjourned. <laughs> 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 Couldn't determine if I want to say motion or minute or meeting. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>